Remember, he said he got the last 30 seconds. This, this doesn't look long enough. I thought it was here for a while. So that means, mm -hmm. I thought so too, but I thought it'd be more than one page. So maybe not. Okay, we're ready. <coughs> Whoops. I now call the March 22nd, 2018 meeting the Madison County Board of Adjustment to order. Will you call the roll for me, please? Ralph Oliver. <coughs> Here. Valerie Himes. Here. Jimmy Rogers. Here. Howard Bowden. Here. George Gill. Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we get started, not just for the record, we need to amend the agenda. All right. The application for the conditional use permit 595 Holiday Lane has been withdrawn by the applicant, so it won't need to be heard tonight. Uh, we take it off the agenda. Alright, thank you. Uh, the first item of business we have is to go over the minutes from the last meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at those? Yes. Alright, anybody notice any issues, comments, questions? If not, I'll open the floor for a motion. I move we accept the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Jimmy Rogers? Yes. Howard Bowden? Yes. Ralph Oliver? Yes. Valerie Hines? Yes. George Dill? Yes. All right, um, so we have two items on the agenda tonight, set of three. Uh, the first one is the dimensional variance for 4330 Simpson Lane. Is there someone here to represent that? All right, who's, who's representing? Me. All right, you want to come to the podium, please, for me? All right, state your name and address for me, please. Paul McDaniel, 4330 Simpson Lane. All right, uh, Mr. McDaniel, this, um, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. What are you here for? Uh, I bought a building for these people up on 25, mm -hmm. and I asked if I needed permits or anything. They said, no, not for this type of building. You can put it any way you want to. So I bought the building up, dug the bank out three feet behind where I'm at there, and put it back as far as I could get it. To leave the room in the front, so cars were parking out. On the piece of property, that's yep. all, that's all the room I had. So, so do you own forty-three thirty something like? No, sir. Robert Mary Hall does. <clears throat> they called up. They called down here and talked to somebody. Uh, so you put in the you. Put in the building for them, or what? Were you no, contract? I'm living there. You're living there. Yeah, I got a trailer there. there. Okay, so you're just renting the place. Yes. Right. I need something to put my truck and stuff in, so it wouldn't get drunk, you know. All right. Like so you've already else. you've already put in the building. Yes, it's sitting there. And how big is the building? Uh, 24 by 26. 26 long, 24 wide. All right. So you didn't get a permit for it because you didn't know. Well, the where I bought it from, I asked the people, they said, no, you don't have to have a permit for these buildings. What, what is it, one of those metal cardboards? I didn't about that. Mr. Chairman, the owner of that business called me a couple of days after that. I guess after you go up and had a chat with yeah, him. Yeah, I went and had a chat with and him, yeah. asked me what the, what the requirements specifically were on buildings like this. So uh, I believe him when he tells me that because I had the, the owner of that business call me a few days later and, and, we, and we had to talk about it. And, um, so I, I think that's, that's accurate. Okay. So where does it, how far does it set back? Did you set it back as far as, I mean, is this trailer? I set it back as far as I could. They got a, like a little <laughs> hill behind me. Mm -hmm. And we dug that hill out about three feet back till we hit all rock and all. And can't dig back no far. I set it back to there. I set it back as far as I could get it back. Is it behind the trailer? Or it's on the side of it, ma'am. It's on the side of it. It's on the side of it. it, it the trailer's right against the bank too. I pushed it back farther. Does the deck on the trailer stick out farther than the carport? I don't no. think so. No, it does not. Okay. It's pretty close. It's probably pretty well in line with the with the end of the day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. So when you uh, when you put the trailer in, you replace the trailer that was already there. Yes. Now, the trailer that was already there didn't stick out as far because it didn't have the deck that you put on. With the deck that you put on it. It's now out further than the original trailer. It had a right? deck on the trailer that was there also, yes. But did it stick out as far? No. I don't know. 
No, 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 with the, with the fence that you have up there now, there's no shoulder on that road, correct? I mean, the fence is almost right out, right almost out to the black. There never was a shoulder on that road. The fence is on this side of the ditch, on my side of the ditch. So that if somebody visits you, comes to visit you, they have to park out on the road? No, they park in my driveway. If the, you just have one visitor? Park in my driveway. I open the gate on the right side, and they park in the grass right there. Now, the way uh, the size of your truck now, when you back up as far as you do, you're almost out on the road now with your truck. With your truck, is that correct? My truck's never sitting there, but it probably would be. Yeah. It's sitting there tonight. Well, yeah, because I was headed out because I was coming up here yesterday. I so put the, my the garage door back there, so I could lock it. The front of the truck. If if you don't pull it into the garage, if you just pull it up to the garage, the front of the truck is actually looks as though it's extending almost onto the road. It's probably about a foot from the road. Yeah. So that if you have a, somebody who comes to visit you who has a truck of the same size, when they pull in, the, either the back of the truck's going to stick out or the front of the truck if they back in. Now if they pull in sideways like I tell them to. Well if they pull, if they pull in the driveway and if the truck's the same size as yours, and they don't pull into the garage. That's what I'm saying. They pull in stick toward, out on the road. What I'm trying to tell you is the gate on that on the left, on the right hand side, when you're looking at it, right. that gate's usually open and somebody can pull in and pull through right there. Inside you the pull on an angle? Yeah, pop oh, okay. over there, yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. That's two car two car garage. Yes. Yes. Right. But there's a gate on that side where somebody comes, if it's bigger than what's sitting there, what's there, they just pull in over there. I just hadn't put no gravel over there or nothing yet because I didn't want to do nothing else to see what was going on right. up here. I stopped doing everything once I got that letter because I don't, you know, got to see what's going on before I continue putting gravel up and everything. When you, when you pull into the garage, uh, pull off the road, uh, if you back in, you're on the road for a certain length of time before you can back in, right? However long it takes just to turn them back in, yeah. I, and the same thing if you were coming out. If you're backing out, you're going to be on the road for a while before you get out. And make if I back out, I don't ever back out. I always back in and I pull out straight. That's why i got plenty of time to look down the road and see what's coming. Gotcha. I always back in. Give me a feet. This is a county right away there. This county road. This go over, you know? I don't know. That's an old road. It could be as old as 30 feet there. Maybe 25, 30 feet there, yeah. So he's not he's not on the county right away there, you think? He's off the coast. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I had a letter from one of my neighbors. Y'all want to see that? She said she couldn't make it up here. Sure, you want to read it? Go ahead. <clears throat> Dear sirs, I have lived on this lane since 1983, and this new mobile home and garage are a big improvement. Of all, before they had made, of all. They have made the road safer just before a sharp curve by adding gravel and making a much wider side. Truck can pull into the short driveway and garage, whereas before folks parked part way along the road once would pull into mud, which is now maintained gravel. All right, so the entrance. Who was that, boss? Yeah. Uh, Jane, T I E R N A M. She's got her phone numbers now here. She, she lives at 4340, 4340 Simpson Lane. No. She's one that's got the two uh, rows of flowers and all. So, so the driveway was already there. 
This yes. driveway location was already yes. there and stuff like that. Right Hold up, I'll get to you. <laughs> All right, does anybody have uh, any further questions? Um, this, my question is Robert and Mary Hall here. No, they I'm Florida. their son, and they're in Florida. I'm here for them. All right. Because the variance has got to be by the owner. Uh, the variance request has got to come from the owner the of the property. Yes. They look on that page. Yes. Yeah. Well, but they're not. Is that typically the way that it's sure. submitted? Well, and the owner son's here representing them, so. That's okay. The son's going to The owner has signed the application, and the owner's <coughs> represented zero. I don't see that as an issue. I don't either. Okay. So, all right, you want to come up and speak? Yeah. Come on up. Uh, 1983, we put in. Next, you need to give us your name. Oh, Victor Fry. Victor Fry, the son of the owners. What, what was your uh, name again? Victor Fry, F R Y E. Okay. All right, Mr. Fry, do you get. Okay, I put that you, old you, trailer in hold there. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you a chance to talk. Do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? Yes, sir. All right, talk away. Okay, I put that trailer in there in 83, the old trailer, and um, Marty Sizemore come down and said that as long as that trailer and the deck was the same distance off the road, it was grandfathered in. So we dug the bank out, pushed the deck and the trailer back in the park so we can get two more foot of deck, and the deck is the same from the road. Now, as far as uh, the fence, now Dad gave the county four or five foot a long time ago and y'all widen the road. Now the fence is in the same spot that it always has been since we give it up. Now there wasn't a fence there, but he's got the dog, so we fenced in the yard. But it's in line with everything that's there. That was original there. Now as far as the ditch, you blame the water company for that because when they come in there and put the water in, all that washed out, made the ditch bigger and the county raised the road, so we had to fill in more gravel. But it is a big improvement. Now, as far as the building, it's one of the portable buildings. You know, it's not in ground. I mean, you take loose, take it down five minutes if you had to. But now, he paid about $7,000 for it, and we were understood that there was no requirement on a portable building. <coughs> but now, it is 32, 33 foot from the road. I think Marty said it needed 50, but we can't go back no more without blasting the bank out. It, just let me, so... According to our, the, our notes, I mean, it's the variance request is to reduce the setback from 50 feet to 19 feet, which would imply it's within 19 foot of the road, a 31 foot variance. Is that correct? No, it's 30, it's 30 it, it, feet yeah, right. well, Marty Merritt measured it, and it was like 32 foot, and they said we needed 50. So we're 18 foot short. So they, they worded their request on this. So, so we're just looking at an 18 foot variance 18 instead of a. Yeah, we okay. need to go back 18 foot, but that's, we can't. That's measured to the center of the road. Right. Yes, or whatever Marty yeah. measured. Yeah. He measured. Well, I don't know what Marty yeah. measured. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if he measured and it, if he measured and it's 31 feet yeah. from the center yeah. of the road, then you need a 19 foot variance. Yeah. You don't yeah. need a 31 foot variance. No, no, just 19 so, foot. But the bank is there. We we dug it out with a bobcat. I just can't go back no further because all I hit was drop and went bank. But as far as that now, I mean, if y'all need to talk to the homeowners, I mean, I request y'all postpone it until they get back after the first of the month. Now they go to Florida every year. I mean, that's known around there or something. But, but other than that, the fence is the same. <coughs> uh, the fence was just took out because there was uh, the lady didn't want the fence there when whoever moved in a long time ago, but we took the fence out but since he's got the dogs. The fence is still in the same spot. But now we're trying to get the culvert to county move it because the culvert was put in the wrong spot after the water company went through there and it's washed out and made the culvert in the wrong spot. So the culvert's actually a foot higher than what it's supposed to be anyway. Okay. He's being moved. But other than that, uh, I don't know. Uh, my parents said that he could do whatever he wanted to with the property as long as whatever it would look good and everybody I know thinks it looks better. And you know, just a big improvement what it is. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Instead of bringing your parents up, could you bring all of us down to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I might go myself. <laughs> all right. Still here. <coughs> part of, part of the yes. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a letter? You want to make the copy of the letter? Copy of the letter part Is, 
Is there anybody else in the audience that wants to speak for or against this? I do. All right. State your name and address for me, please. Bridget Fry, 4270 Simpson Lane. All right. Ms. Fry, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? Yep. All right. Yes. Go ahead. I just don't see what the building is hurting anything. I agree with the letter that they sent in. Everything down there looks 10 times better than it did before with that old trailer that was sitting there. They've done a wonderful job. The fence is not in the way. Obviously, anybody that has a driveway, whether you're in a <coughs> subdivision or whatever, when you back out of your driveway, you're going to back out a little bit and stop and see if there's traffic coming. So I don't see that that is really an issue for him. I don't see that there's a danger. I don't see any problems. We've been having problems with people calling in on us as well for things that we have been doing ourselves as well because we live directly across from this farm. So I think it's just people that want to be in a neighborhood committee and we don't have a neighborhood committee. We, we are personal landowners. We, you know, we don't need a neighborhood committee on Simpson Lane. We need to be, you know, but I see no problems whatsoever with what this man has done. It looks wonderful and it's, I've been there for 27 years. My husband's been there since the day he come home from the hospital and he just couldn't be here tonight. But that, there's no issues down there with, uh, with all of this. I just wanted everybody to know that we think that it's perfect. I mean, like I said, my husband's the longest running person on Simpson Lane at this time. So everything down there looks absolutely perfect and we see no issues with it at all. All right, great, thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else? <coughs> Name and address for me, please. Uh, Robert Fry, I live at 4262 Simpson Lane. All right, Mr. Fry, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? Yes, I do. Go ahead, please. I think what he has done to his home and with the fence and with his driveway and everything down there, it looks perfect. I recently put a home on 4262 Simpson Lane last year, and I had these same issues and these same problems from the same people, and they will not notify their name. They classify themselves as anonymous. And the county has came down, the county water, the state water department has came down, the uh, health department has came down. I've had representatives from almost every branch that has anything to do with this come to my home. And everything that he has done has been up to code with everything that I have done. There has been no variance, no difference, because we have all communicated and helped each other with this and everything that he has done has been in line with everything that I've done and everything is perfect. There was nothing that anybody found anything wrong with it. He has done a magnificent job as far as making the land a better place. It makes Simpson Lane look better. It makes his home look better. It makes that whole farm look better. The fence is in line with the other fences that Robert and Mary Hall have to run their cattle. His fence is directly in line with that fence. Everything is straight. Everything is looks great. And the building that he put up is a perfect building. If he put up some old lean-to that was about to fall down or about to cave in, I could understand this. But what he put up is immaculate. I mean, it looks great. He has done the work. He has done the research. And he has done everything else to have this building sitting there. Okay, great. Thank you. Have we had any? Let me just get on the right here real quick. I, <clears throat> we haven't had any calls okay. uh, for or against this either way, so uh, uh, anonymous or otherwise. Nobody's called to uh, say they're against this or uh, nobody's had any problem with it or, or nobody's called to say they're for it. So it's, there's not been any either way since we have had it. Okay. If I can, I would just like to say I know it. I know that it looks bad. Just state Mr. your name again for me. Bridget Fry, 4270 Simpson Lane. I know it looks bad that Mr. Fry was here for his parents, but just to let you all know, we are we are not kin to Mr. Fry whatsoever. Our last name is Fry as well. And I know everybody was looking at us like, you know, it's just family here doing it. It's not. We are not kin to Victor Fry whatsoever. We just so happen. He has the last name my husband has, and they moved in farms across the street. I just wanted everybody to realize that it wasn't, you know, just family up here doing that. It was that we're not kin like that, okay? Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so. 
Is there anybody else that would like anybody else like to speak for or against the variance request? Anybody? Anybody? Does anybody have any further questions, comments from the board? Audience, do you have anything you want to add? Nothing? If not, I'll open the floor for a motion. make a motion to approve this dimensional variance of 19 feet. From the center of the road on Simpson Lane at 4330, being reduced back from 50 to 31 feet. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. Call the roll for me, please. Ralph Oliver? Yes. Valerie Hines? Yes. Jimmy Rogers? Yes. Howard Bowden? Yes. George Dill? Yes. Congratulations, your variance has been approved. Well, thank you. I very much appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, get with Bert after that, and he'll get you straightened out on everything else you need to do. Call me the office tomorrow. Let me know what we need to do Okay. All right. Thank you. 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 I think the owner's Highway. address is 6,002. Okay, so 6,022. For the, for the uh, conditional use permit is 6,022. All right, 6,022 Battlefield Memorial Parkway. Is there someone here representing them? Homeowner? I'm not the homeowner, or, but I am the one. All right, come on up. Shane State. Garrett. Shane Garrett. Mm -hmm. All right. Your address, please. 1261 Clark Road. All right, Mr. Garrett, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? I do. Go ahead. <clears throat> Tell us what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, going to be repairing helicopters in uh, the building that I'm trying to get the conditional use for. This is non flyable. So we're not, just to ease everybody's mind, I know Ms. Sipple was worried about helicopters flying over, but it's non flyable. They'll be hauled in. And. Uh, Noise level will be minimal. We've got an air compressor we're going to be using. It'll be inside the building. Uh, no chemicals being used. Nothing. It's. It'll be less than an auto shop. I'll show you that. You know, no oils or any of that nature. What do you do to the helicopters? What do you, are you sandblasting them or? We're, we'll be or doing structural repair. It's the. Uh, what is that involved? The body. What does that involve? The body. The. The ribs, uh, the whole skeleton of the helicopter. Okay. It's uh, no, no engines or electrical. They're just for no sandblasting or nothing like that. Runs, mm -hmm. There'll be no engines in them. So, no engine transmissions, rotor head, blades, none of that. So they bring them, in on, bring them in on a flatbed. Yes. Flatbed? Yes. Wh which building are you working in? It'll when be you go the, in that uh, driveway, are the, is it the red one? The red one. On the left with the big white doors. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Sir. Is it this one right here with the silver roof? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's you, it. You know this, the dimensions of that all? <coughs> it's 50 by 100. How many How many can you think it will hold at one time inside there? I'm, I'm going to probably work on no more than two. Two? Okay. So you've got employees that come and are working on the... I have two partners. <coughs> <coughs> so there'll be three of you there working every day. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. <laughs> what what is this zone? Is this a residential zone? Is that uh, agriculture zone? Agricultural. Yeah. Is this the building right before you get down the bottom of uh, Jackson Hall? You can't see, see this building from the road. Well, no. 
maybe when the trees are off, you can see a little bit of it. But yeah. for the most part, you can't see this building from. Uh, you can see the brown house on the right before you go down over the hill to Jackson Hall. Right now. So, are, is all this stuff going to stay inside the building? Yes. We're not going to have a helicopter junkyard out there or anything like that. This stuff goes in the building, goes back on a truck and out of the building, and back out to where exactly. it needs to go. Whatever, whatever scrap will go to. 21 to Lanham's or <laughs> the uh, Alcan for the aluminum. Now, are these military or uh, commercial? Negative, they're all civilian. Is Steve Phillips here? Yeah. <clears throat> that's the name on the application. That's right. That's probably yeah. Okay, that's the applicant. Okay. I should be the. Yeah, yeah. I filled one out. You did? Yeah. Because this applicant says Steve Phillips. Unless I did it wrong. That's possible. I don't have an application with a Shane Garrett nowhere. I don't either, but. All right. Is there anybody else that want to speak for or against Mr. Garrett's request to come on up here? Let's hear from you. Hey, name and address, please. This is Sarah Tompkins. I live at 5736. We live like there's a building in between us and Marie's talking right. about. Ms. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Tompkins, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as pertains to this case? Yes. Yeah, continue. Okay, we already get enough noise from the ordinance. I mean, when they put the bombs off and everything, our windows rattle and everything. So I'm just concerned about this noise. He says we're not going to be having, but minimum noise. And I just don't see that if he's down there working on engines and stuff. He said he wasn't working on engines. So I just want to clarify that right off the top. He said minimum noise. So what is that? How much is that? I'll allow him since to come back no, up and review that here. Since there's no noise okay. ordinance. Have you heard him mowing his yard, ma'am? I don't know. We have a lot of neighbors there. I just trying to think because I've just think people deal with body work. A lot of the grinders and stuff are no louder than a lawnmower with the PTO on a lawnmower. So I didn't know if you could hear his lawnmower running. Well, there's here. so many lawnmowers going on. There's when they mow the lawns, you don't know. We had a honky tonk in front of us there for a long time, and couldn't get nothing done with that. <laughs> So finally, they raided them and got rid of that, and now they're talking about putting something like this in. There's only one house in between us. We have a lot of children comes out and plays and everything. You know, we don't want them out there listening to a bunch of noise when they could be out there having fun. I agree. Which house is yours? Lord, I don't know. What's the address? It's 5736. Up at the top, right there. Yeah, she's way up. Yeah, way up there. Yeah. And we're talking down here is 6022. Yes. So there's two houses in between you? One. 5872 and 5988. 6022. Well, isn't the house owned by this gentleman over here? Yeah. Well, but the building, I think they're referring to the actual building itself. So this is not, not from his house, but from the building. more than a quarter of a mile. Yep. Um, any further questions for her? Yeah. If not, does anybody else want to come up and speak? For or against? Give me your name and address first, please. Mike Sipple, 6066. Um, Mr. Sipple? Yes, Mr. Sipple, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as per this case? Yes, sir. Continue. I just, I mean, I support it as a business. I just want to confirm and make for sure that it, it just the question asked, because I know I need to come up here to ask you, that for sure we're not dealing with any kind of engines, right? So I think the bodywork stuff, and what he's talking about is compressor is inside the building anyway. 
So I just want to confirm one more time that we're not talking about any kind of heat just stuff. But that's our only concern. Okay. Was you know this thing going on and whenever. So I think it was just I just wanted to ask that one question to confirm it's just body work basically. Okay. Thank you. Right. Gentleman in the blue shirt, do you have anything? You want to come on up? Roswell Cox, 1658 Battlefield. All right, Mr. Cox, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to the case? Yes. Continue for me. Excuse me. Go ahead and continue. Uh, I had a number of questions about uh, this enterprise, but Mr. Garrett has satisfied my mind uh, satisfactorily. Uh, it's been a quiet neighborhood. I've raised my girls out there, and I've been out there since 74 in two different uh, locations. But uh, we are concerned, my family and I are concerned, that uh, it will remain a quiet neighborhood for uh, and quiet and safe neighborhood for our children and grandchildren and uh, we would like some kind of uh, supporting statement from the opposition that this will be the case okay let me get everybody else does anybody else want to come up and speak okay come on back up I'll let you come up last and you can reboot, rebute and answer all the questions. Sue Tompkins, 5736 Battlefield. What I was concerned about is also is the traffic. We have a lot of gravel trucks that goes to the, to the quarry. And this is going to be a lot more traffic with a lot bigger things. The road always needs repairing. So what's this going to do now? more big trucks coming in there with more big things i mean we have a lot of gravel trucks so just think what this is going to do and then we have children out there playing all the time so that's all i got to say all right thank you have we had any calls or <coughs> no calls no comments no questions on it what i'll wait i'll ask him go ahead come on up Name and address, please. Aaron Sippel, 6098 Battlefield. All right, Mr. Sippel, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to the case? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I support everything he's wanting to do. It's right. a business. He's trying to earn a living. I appreciate that. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? Name and address, please. Jordan Justice, uh, 208 North Brookhaven. All right, Mr. Justice, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to this case? Yes, I do. Continue, please, okay. for me. Um, we are working on aircraft, and um, I don't know if you know the turnaround rate on these aircraft, but it takes quite a long time. So um, everything is uh, governed, checked. Um, we have to have uh, safety in mind at the highest um, we do have children and uh, grandchildren, and they will be, you know, they may come to the shop or whatever, so their safety is always in our mind, and the surrounding children. Um, noise pollution, uh, talkings like 50 decibels, working on the, the helicopter will be no more than like 60 or 70, but we'll be enclosed in a building. Um, all we're trying to do is, uh, make a living try to start our own company um, the community is uh, we want to please everybody so if anybody ever has a problem let us know and I'm sure we can take care of it. that's it yeah, thank you anybody else all right mr. Garrett you want to come back up and answer some of the concerns and questions that were presented yeah I, and I, I understand what you're saying I, I've got children 
and, and I, I understand completely, and I don't want somebody coming in next to me causing a bunch of racket. And, and believe me, that's not what we're going to be doing down there. And, and as far as the traffic, the you're talking at minimum three months to six months for us to build a helicopter. That's at minimum. So there's not going to be a lot of traffic and, and all of that. But, and, and the noise level, like I say, is going to be minimal. Because we're going to be inside. This has to be climate controlled. So it's going to be inside. And like one of my partners was saying, it's, we're, we're governed by the FAA. So it's, you know, safety and all of that is a big, big concern for us. And I've got, I've got a grandson that I plan on having down there and hopefully teaching him how to use his hands and to work. What, what was the building used for before, before this? Was it just a barn building? I mean, it was there. Somebody storage. built it for a reason. Storage. Just storage building? Okay. What's, it, what's the building made out of? It's metal. It's a metal. Steel. Steel building? Steel building. Can I make a suggestion that we get, get the property owner on the record as being, uh, because he's the applicant, he, we're going to have to issue this permit to him. Mm -hmm. We might just need to get him on the record that he's okay with that and he understands uh, what's going to be happening there. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to do another application, I think. As long as we get him to verify. So, that's fine. That, I think we'll get Mr. Phillips on the record as, as, as the property owner. All right, Mr. Phillips, get name and address, please. Uh, Steve Phillips, 6002 Battlefield Memorial Highway. All right, Mr. Phillips, do you agree to give truthful and accurate information as it pertains to the case? I do, yes. Go right ahead. I'm not a property owner. Okay. I've owned that property since uh, 1983. 76 acres there. And uh, we built that building, I think it was 1993. And it's mostly been used for storage and a few other things, but uh, it's all steel and concrete, and insulated. Uh, I spent a lot of time, money, uh, building it, fixing it. And the way they've talked, you know, that there won't be hardly any noise or probably nobody even know it's there. So uh, I'm all for small business. It already has electric and water and everything in there, sir? Yeah. We just need to make sure you understand that the, if the permit's issued to you, you'll be responsible for it. If, if the board grants a permit, yeah. any conditions that they put on that permit, Hours of operation, signage, advertising, whatever they choose to do, you'll be responsible. So if, if they violate any of those conditions, we'll be contacting you and, and you, we'll need to protect, protect yourself yep. uh, with your leases or whatever you go about doing that. Uh, but, but your name will be the name on the, on the condition of your permit. Okay. If you're okay with that, I just want to yep. make sure we got that on the yep. record. Yep. Okay. That's fine. The deed that you attached to the application said that you only owned a half interest in the property. Have you since acquired the other half interest? Yeah, uh, that was my parents. They passed away in 2010 and 11. I got another deed somewhere. But All right, Mr. Garrett, you want to come back up? What, what kind of hours are we talking about operating this? I mean, is this an 8 to 5 Monday to Friday thing? Well, or? I would... Uh, I work at the depot right now on helicopters, so to get this business going, I've still got a full-time job, so I'm wanting to work there no later than 8 of the night, if, if possible. Okay. What? Uh, 5. I've got to have some time off. <laughs> so you're wanting to work Monday through Friday? Mm -hmm. No I'm Saturdays? Saying. No Saturdays? Maybe occasionally. But he wanted to ask for it now. That's right, yeah. Well, I'll, say, I'll go ahead and say Saturday, too, but, I mean, we've got kids, but, uh, you know. <clears throat> Any hours of operation again? Say 8 to 8. 8 to 8. Yeah. Have you already been working on them there? Are there any no, equipment or anything in the building? We, we're stored it in there. We've got it. I just went to Oklahoma last week, uh, two, two weeks ago and got it. So stored. And you Is said it, that you probably get a, a helicopter in maybe every two months? Three to six months. Every three to six months you'd have one or two helicopters coming? Possibly. I'm not going to not going to say for sure. It, it just depends on how damaged they are. That's, uh, you know, if they're tore up pretty bad, you're looking at a year. Hmm. So. Well, these wrecked helicopters, yes. damaged? Yes. Okay, it's repair. 
All right, so we're looking at a Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8, only three employees, no signage. We're not going to, you don't need any signage. I don't, not, I you don't, don't advertise, don't they bring them to you. Yeah. Is your agent pressure inside the shop? So you work full time, but your other employees be working with you Monday. Uh, Monday we we all work at the depot, so it's uh, when I say eight to eight, it's it's probably going to be two thirty to eight in the evenings, and when we get off work, till we, get, till we get going. But we'll cover yeah. you cover eight to eight if you want to go out there on Saturday morning eight o'clock. You can go out there and work on yeah. Saturday. Right. Okay. You covered. It's good. Um, So as far as traffic to address the concern of the citizen, there will be no or very little impact because you're only bringing a helicopter in once every six months or a couple every six right. months. So it'd be minimal other impact than it'll be, other than just know, us three going in there. Just going in and coming out and stuff. You stated you just got back from Oklahoma, so you brought something with you. What did you bring it in on? Uh, gooseneck. Gooseneck, Trevor? It's uh, the thing we put it in is eight foot wide, and 20 foot long. So not that big of a piece we're putting in. Anybody else in the audience want to come up and speak for or against? Do you have anything else you want to say, Mr. Garrett? I think I'm good. Uh, I don't have any further questions. Or anything. Um, all right, if there's no further questions or comments, I'll open the floor for a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit for the property located at 6022 Battlefield Memorial Highway, Berea, Kentucky. This conditional use permit will allow the operation of a helicopter structural repair shop on the property. The hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. All work and storage will be inside the shop. And there's no signage on the property. Do I hear a second? No shake. Call the roll, please. Ralph Oliver? Yes. Jimmy Rogers? Yes. Howard Bowden? Yes. Valerie Hine? Yes. George Dillon? Yes. Mr. Garrett, your conditional use permit's been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No further business? No. On the record or off the record? If there's no further business, I adjourn the meeting. You going to come back and tell us? Well, not to waste any more of my time, I received a notice of somebody wanting to put some kind of a wedding facility on Holiday Lane in Waco, Kentucky. Has that been uh, that? If you would have been here earlier, that I know uh, uh, cases been withdrawn.